Hello everyone. Welcome to Missouri Star Live. I am Misty Doan and it's so wonderful to spend another Tuesday with you. Let's see who we have tuning in here. We have Mary Lou from Vermont, Judy from California, Billy from Georgia, Teresa from Oklahoma. You guys are all popping in there. Thank you so much for being here. As usual, we have Liz behind the camera. Hello. She's following along with our YouTube crowd, I believe. So who do we have tuning in there? Well, we do have Isaac from Missouri tuning Isaac, in. Isaac, hello. We also have Annette from uh, Pe Pevely, Missouri. Oh, awesome. Um, and Susan from Mesa, Arizona. Wendy from Longview, Texas. Very, very good. And greetings from Indiana, from Ray Ann. Awesome. Thank you guys so much for joining us today. We've got a really, really fun project. We're going to make this cute little zipper pouch tote, whatever you want to call it. I think it's like the perfect little travel tote. Um, so that's what I'm calling it. And um, to make this project, um, you're going to need about a third of a yard of two contrasting fabrics. You can use the same one if you want your lining fabric to be the same as your outside. I opted for two different fabrics. We use these great prints um, from Sandy Gervais collection. Is it called From the Heart? Is that right? right. From the Heart by Riley Bla uh, for Riley Blake Designs, excuse me. These are just really cute little Valentine's prints. And we also grabbed our red fancy zip zippers. Here's one out of the package, if you can see it. It's got these great little heart details little on the sides. cutouts are so cute. So, so cute. And remember, we have lots of these adorable zippers available in any color. So, uh, not any color, lots of colors lots to match colors. any fabric is That's what right. I meant to say. And so there's um, anything to, to suit you, your style. So be sure to check those out and they come in a multi-pack or you can buy them individually. So really, really great. Yep. You're and all... we've got links to all of those in our description. Yes, exactly. All this stuff is available on our website and there's uh, handy links for you below or above depending on where you're watching. You're also going to need some Bozal Foam Interform Plus. Um, there are a couple different varieties of Bozal Foam. Make sure you get this Interform Plus. It has um, the iron-on adhesive so that we can use this, that's what's gonna give it the shape that we want. I was gonna ask how you got it to hold that shape. Yes, it's Perfect. this awesome bosal foam. And and yeah, if if you have, I'll show you how to use it. Some people are, are not super familiar with this, but it's a great product. It's a really heavy duty stabilizer, helps it hold its shape and you can kind of mush it and it will pop back, which I love. So Definitely. It makes it very sturdy. So let's just jump right in. This is a really simple, simple project. So remember, when you're working with these zippers, the beauty of them is we can attach them right on the top so that we can show off this fancy edge. And so we can create the width of this as wide as the zipper is. So these are up to 14 inches, but I decided to go with 12. So I cut 12 inch strips from both of my fabrics. So you can see here, I have this piece here that's cut 12 inches by the width of my fabric. And I've got it folded in half. And I'm going to go ahead and lay this out. And what I'm looking for is a 12 by 21 inch rectangle. I'm going to go ahead and grab my ruler. And with these 12 inch strips, you can actually get two pieces, generally, depending on the width of your fabric. Um, so you can make two of these out of your one strip if you're using two different fabrics, or you can use the same fabric and get it out of one strip. Awesome. So let me slide my pressing mat out of the way. We're gonna cut off the fold so that we have our 12 by 21 inch pieces. All right. So now I went ahead and did that already um, out of my other fabric. So I've got two rectangles ready to go. And like I said, I can set this piece of, these pieces aside so I can make a second one. And I also went ahead and cut out my bosal foam at that exact same measurement, 12 inches by 21 inches. And so then what we're going to do is we are going to lay the bosal foam down first. And then I'm going to put one layer of fabric facing up and the next layer facing down, right sides together. 
So just to recap, you've got the bosal with the fusible facing up. Well, so this is actually fusible on both sides. Okay. okay. It's, so that's a great question. It's actually fusible on both sides. So it shouldn't matter which okay. one you have facing up. Perfect. But we do want to just make sure that we have the wrong side of the fabric towards that bosal. Okay. And so we've got our two rectangles together, right sides together. And I'm going to go ahead and grab some pins just because we are dealing with a little bit of bulk. Um, don't want it to shift on you. And we don't want it to shift. So I'm just going to put a few pins in here to hold everything where I want it. And while you're pinning, Diana asked, can you use regular batting and maybe just quilt the layers together? You could absolutely. I didn't try it. I knew that Bozal would work for this project, so that is what I chose because I wanted it to really hold its shape well. But I'm sure regular batting with a good amount of quilting would still hold its shape. I first tried it without any batting or stabilizer, and that was just sad. So I don't <laughs> recommend that. <laughs> no sad bags. No, we don't want that. So let me move some of this out of the way so you guys can see here. And what we're going to do first is we're actually just going to take a quarter inch seam on either side of our rectangle. So just, you know, straight seams on either end. On the short sides. On the short sides, okay. exactly. So this is pretty straightforward. Turn this around, go down the other side. And I love just listening to the hum of the machine. I know, it's kind of relaxing, isn't it? There we go. So now we can take out these pins. Put those back in my pin cushion. And we are going to open up between our two layers of fabric and turn this right sides out. Okay. And as you're doing that, really good question from Michelle. Is the yeah. inside fabric next to the bosal or the outside so fabric? So at this point, it really doesn't matter uh -huh. because now that we've turned it right sides out, they're both next they're to the bosal. They're both there. And All so right. you can choose whichever one you want to be your right side or your wrong side. You can see because of how much shape this holds, just these little seams are kind of making this lift, but that's not a big deal. We're just going to finger press our edges because we know we want these to lay nice and flat. And just, I'm gonna start on one end and take this over and start pressing it down. Can you see this well enough, Noah? You got a good, good angle? Okay, excellent. So I'm just gonna start on that end and I'm just gonna start rolling you do want to kind of hold it in place so that that adhesive works. And we're just going to turn it around and press. That's right. It's got the Bosal Inner Foam Plus. Sorry, now you can hear me. <laughs> um, and it's cut to 12 by 21 inches, yep. all three pieces. And so Misty is now just pressing that together because it's got a little bit of a fusible to hold that together. Now, so how the bag keeps its shape. Yep. And so now we're just fusing that fabric to the Bosal Foam Stabilizer, the Inner Foam Plus. And Twyla, yes, it is adhesive on both sides. It is. Yep. That's, you can see I flipped it over, so I'm giving it a press from the other side. Just making sure it's nice and connected. And now you can see it's basically like one really thick piece of fabric. And so this is ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and grab our zipper. I wanted to have some good contrast, so I opted to use this white side so that my red zipper would pop as the outside of my fabric. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to attach our zipper and we're gonna sew it right on top of this straight edge. And so I like to just make sure that my zipper is kind of hanging off the end. And I do put a few pins in here just to have it stay where I want. So let's do that. And this is like the easiest zipper ever. It is so easy. It really is. Let me do it 
make sure I'm not hanging too far over. You can see here, actually, let me turn this over. I'm just feeling with my fingers when I'm pinning to make sure that my fabric isn't gonna get in the way of where my zipper opens up. So I just wanna make sure that I'm staying far enough over that the zipper can still move freely. So that's what I'm doing. Just feeling that with my fingers, putting some pins in here just to hold this in place. All right, and just a few will do it. So now you can use a zigzag if you'd like. I'm gonna just use a straight stitch and I'm just using some red thread so that it will blend right in with my zipper. And I am going to, I've got this great narrow foot of the Jane. And so I just run my zipper right along the edge of the zipper itself. And I'm gonna go ahead and pull that pin out of the way and back stitch when I start. And then I'm just gonna straight stitch down. Like I said, you could use a decorative stitch here if your heart desires. But I just wanted you to know that a straight stitch works just fine. So again, we're just gonna make sure we don't have the bulk of the fabric in the way of the zipper itself. And zoom down this side. Okay, and now, we are going to do the same thing on the other side. And I have to be honest, this part is the trickiest part. So you actually, all you need to do is just open up your zipper and it makes your life way easier because you know, you're dealing with kind of a tube here right. once you've attached them together. So just go ahead and open up your zipper and make sure that these are lined up. Can you see this or do you need me to move over to the ironing board? Okay. So we're just going to make sure that it stays lined up and I like to just put a pin kind of in the middle so that I can get started and know that this is all going to work out. But And then you can also go ahead and take off if you have an extension table mm -hmm. or um, the, the bulk of your machine so you have a smaller area that you're working with. Sounds good. And so now by having this unzipped, I can really just turn the bulk of this out of the way for the majority of the sewing. And again, I'm just gonna lay right along that edge and get started. Just want to take your time on this and just down at the end is the trickiest part but it's not hard because even with the bozel in there you can just kind of shove it around exactly. the way you want it like I said it's basically just like a thicker piece of fabric at this point yep you can still totally maneuver it and get it where you want it to go and so see now we can just triple check everything lines up nicely that looks great so now i'm actually going to go ahead and open up my zipper because we are going to need to turn this out okay so i'm going to open up the zipper and then i'm going to use my cutting mat and fold it in half this should measure right at i believe 11 inches one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten so my zipper needs to split that five inch mark okay Okay. And so I'm just going to make sure that I have this lined up right like that. And I'm going to go ahead and put another pin, but I'm going to put it back just a little ways because I am going to take, you know what? I forgot to turn this. We're going to turn this. Oh, inside that, out. We're going to turn this inside out before we do that. That would have so been we, bad, you guys. So we open the <laughs> zipper so that you can turn it back once you've zipped, once, once you've, you've sewn it closed. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Sorry about that, guys. Okay. So now we're going to make sure... You can still see right here that we want the zipper to split that five inch mark. And we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite end and put a pin in it to make sure it stays where we want. And you're putting that pin back so you can sew right alongside it. Exactly, because okay. we're gonna come back and sew a quarter inch seam on either of these ends now. So let's take this to the machine. 
Sorry if that got confusing. Almost forgot to flip it out. Everybody makes mistakes. We got it figured out. <laughs> now when you get to this zipper, I know for a lot of people it can be a little nerve wracking to sew over. These are really easy to sew over. Just make sure you have a nice sharp needle and just go kind of slow, take your time. And I am gonna back stitch a couple times over that zipper um, to make sure we are creating a, a stopping point for the zipper so it doesn't try and slide off. Nice and secure. Monica's asking, why wouldn't you use your zipper foot? You absolutely could. Yep, absolutely. Um, this, the foot that is on Misty's machine, which is the Baby Lock Accomplish, is a really skinny foot that's about the size of a zipper foot, so it works great to just leave it there, but you could absolutely put on your zipper foot. And what's great about this is that you're just sewing right on top. There's exactly. nothing complicated. Right, and so it doesn't even, you don't even necessarily need to be a certain distance away from the zipper because you want uh, the detail to show. And so you could sew all the way out on the edge and it would be totally fine. So again, I'm gonna approach this zipper. I'm gonna make sure that they're lined up together and then I'm gonna back stitch a couple times and then just continue on down. There we go. All right, so that is done. And now we can cut off the rest of our zipper. So we're just gonna use our ruler and our rotary cutter, and we're gonna cut right through those ends. That easy. That easy on both sides, just like that. And now you can see we can turn this, but the first thing we're gonna do is actually box all of our corners. And so, we are going to open each side up like so. And you, again, you just want to kind of maneuver it until you can mm -hmm. get it to lay how you want it. And it'll, it'll behave for you. It really will. It is not hard to work with. And so I like to just use my seam line here as the you know center guide. And then let me grab a marking pen. Remember, you can use anything. This mark is going to be on the inside of your bag, so you don't have to worry too much about it. And then I'm going to use my straight, my ruler here. I'm using this uh, 45 line to go along the edge, and then I'm measuring down two inches from the, the point to two inches, and I'm going to draw a line across here. Make sure that stays straight. And then we're gonna take this to the machine and we're gonna sew right on that line. And that's how we're gonna create the box shape. You do wanna make sure that you back stitch a couple times at the beginning and the end. And you can see by doing that already, this side is starting to get that wall that we want. And we just continue and turn to the next side and we're going to repeat the exact same step. So remember, we're going to line up that seam line in the middle. We're going to move the bulk out of the way. Then we'll use the 45 line of our ruler, line it up with one side, measure down two inches from the point. Lorelai says this is a great fat quarter project too. You're it's absolutely right. Perfect for a fat quarter, yes. And then we're gonna make that mark. So right on that line. Back stitch at the beginning. And again at the end. There we go. Now, I have left these in here so that I can show you how all four of them look when they're boxed. So let me turn this right back out because this is what it looks like after you've boxed all your corners. You've got these little tabs that are left. Now there's a couple options. You could totally leave these on here if they don't bother you, but we can cut them off also. So I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna use my ruler and use, I'm gonna use a little bit larger than a quarter inch just because we are working with quite a bit of bulk. And I'm just gonna cut that off. 
and turn to all four sides and trim off that corner. There we go. And one more. And there's some conversation here too. Um, several different folks saying, are you worried about the inside seams being kind of unfinished that's a, and different I, ways that you can finish it. So you absolutely can. Yes. So that's a really great question. And I actually figured quite a few of you would have questions about that. There's a couple of really easy options to finish this. First of all, you could just bind this as you would a quilt. So I would bind this little straight side first and then these little short sides. And then that binding would enclose these seams because you're just dealing with these little eye seams on either side. It would be really, really quick to bind. Absolutely. Um, on a machine even. You just absolutely machine bind that and it would enclose all of that. And then you don't have any raw edges at all. I'm quite frankly not too worried about it. <laughs> I think uh, zipper pouches are pretty, pretty sturdy and they, they put up with a lot. And so I, I don't know. I, I don't feel like I have to wash mine too often. So I don't think it's going to fray, but if you're worried about it, I would just bind it like you would a typical quilt edge. And then you can see how it comes together. It's and we've got so this great cute. little zipper that wraps the sides and it is so cute. It's like I said, I think it's great for a travel pouch. Um, I actually went ahead and included this iron on vinyl because I think if you wanted to use it for cosmetics or for travel, if you want to have all of your, um, you know, shampoo and conditioner and stuff that you could drop in there, you could iron on vinyl to the inside layer Smart. and then it would make it really easy, easy to, to, wipe clean. to wipe clean. So that's a great um, product that's also available. And you would just iron that on to that inside layer of fabric before you stack up your layer of bosal and to fabric rectangles. So super, super simple. Do we have any other questions? Yeah, just a couple kind of detail questions. So sure. Kay would like to know, do you measure from the point of the fabric or the point where the stitches intersect when you're boxing the corners? That's a great question. Honestly, you can do either. Just do the same thing on every one so okay. that all four of your corners match up. Um, I usually just went from the tip of the fabric, but okay. you could do either. Honestly, it was easier for me to see the tip of the fabric because we are dealing with so much bulk. You can see here when this is folded down, I can hardly really see the seam. And mm -hmm. so I know my point is right here. So I just used that as a guide and measured down the two inches. Perfect. Um, so just whatever works for your brain and just do that consistently on all four corners. Okay. So and anything then, else? Yeah. Can you show us a close up of the zipper that you stitched so we can see yeah. kind of how close to the zipper it is? Can that you it's... see this one, Noah? Let me zoom in there. So you and see the you... stitching is... And so it, it it's about right at a quarter inch away. And then looks great. We've got this cute little ruffle that forms with the, the heart detail. It's really cute. Let me see if you guys, yeah, it's exactly the same, but it just disappears with that um, red thread, which yeah. is pretty awesome. So. And so if you're, again, just as a, a quick, we're going to cut 12 by 21 inch That's pieces right. of fabric. Yep. We've got the same size of the Bozal Interform Plus, That's right. which has and you do want the inner form. That's the one that has the fusible. You want that double-sided fusible. So it gives you this great finished look. And you although want. you've made the 12 inch bag, you started with our 14 inch Missouri star fancy zips That's zipper. Right. Yes. And we've got the really cute heart, but there's also other colors and shapes, but this heart just looks so adorable. Exactly. I wanted to do a little project for Valentine's. I think this would be so cute to, you know, pop some gifts for a girlfriend in and be able to take some treats um, to drop by. Um, it's just a nice little size, whether you want to fill it with some favorite things to share or anything like that. Or like I said, it's great for travel. Um, my kids are always rounding up zipper pouches and they've already been eyeing this one. So, <laughs> you know, they Love can it. put all their treasures in them. So there's just so many uses for, for a great zipper pouch. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, if you have any other questions, be sure and leave them in the comments and we'll, we will circle back to them. And we will see you next week. Have a fabulous week and stay safe out there. Bye. Bye.